Calazars, cow lasers. Calazars, cow lasers. Calazars, cow lasers. Come on, let's have some adventures. We'll spend days, we'll spend weeks, we'll spend months working our way through treasure hunts. Calazars, cow lasers. Calazars, cow lasers. All right, welcome everybody. It's Thursday. It's Cow Lasers. It's K Pro, and tonight special guest Bill. You guys may know him as Give Me Title to the Gold. He had a YouTube channel. He put up some videos. We'll have to ask him why he took those down, and will they ever come back? Da, but Phil- da, da. <laughs> Phil's here to <laughs> share his solve with the community. Maybe get some feedback. Maybe not. Be nice, everybody. Uh, so, how you doing, K Pro? I'm great. I made it through my week. Oh, and I'm sure everyone in the room is wondering. I got through my audit. Whoop whoop. Yeah, and they congratulations. Said it was fabulous. Whoop whoop. <laughs> and I so my boss let me take the day off on Wednesday, and my tire blew and it sucked. But that's okay. <laughs> I had the day off and I got new tires. And for the good Samaritan, I don't know your name. Um, but I did give you my six pack and a little bit of cash because you helped me on the side of the road and I Thank you. So if you're on my Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. I got through a tire blowout as a single mom with a 10-year-old kid. Maybe Boom. he's watching right now. That'd be cool. Uh, I, there was very little English there. I knew enough Spanish to get us by. That you, was, did you ask so him probably not. where warm waters halt? <laughs> Agua? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. I, don't I don't know, know. either. Um, yeah. Somebody out there knows. I say... Um, no, Freya. Phil's <laughs> like, stop know. giving away my soul. No. <laughs> anyway. All right, Phil. No, thanks. Good Samaritans. They, they deserve their weight in gold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Um, and if you're going to have a blowout of your tire on your day off is the way to do it. Um, well, and I was literally driving up to the, driving right past the tire station. So when it popped, I thought there was an explosion. Like there was a grenade maybe out of Joe treasure hunters box, but, um, and then I pulled <laughs> nice. over and we were looking to find, and then it said, add air to tire. And I went out and my tire was in shreds. I'm like, add, add air. Like it should say your tire is no longer. but anyway, <laughs> this isn't a tire show. Let's get on to the good stuff. All right. So Phil's going to introduce himself here in one second. I just remind, want to remind everybody that super chats on. If you have a question, you just have to get answered of me, K pro or, or Phil super chats. One way you can do that. And then make sure you guys thumbs up the video, because what are we doing here? We're providing an outlet for searchers to come on and share their stories. And this particular searcher wants to share his solve. So we thank him for that. Phil, introduce yourself to everybody and tell The big question is, why would you want to share your solve with everybody? Is there a little bit of a delay first? Because um, I see it on YouTube, and it looks like yes. a little bit of a delay. Though, well, there I will be a delay on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. it's like 10 okay. seconds. So yeah. no, I wouldn't even I, – I freeze mine, but I watch the chat. Just the chat. Because it'll only watch. get confusing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name's Phil. I'm, I'm, give me title to the gold. Uh, I did put out some videos previously. That was the West Yellowstone area. And I did take them down. I kind of felt like uh, I bailed on that once Forrest had started really mentioning – people overlooking New Mexico and uh, start doing more research on warm waters. And, and uh, when, you know, he started saying, you know, I don't understand why people aren't looking at the poem, you know, and I said, you know what, I'm going to stop marrying stuff to maps and Google maps. And I'm just going to concentrate on this poem and I'm going to look at every single word in it. I took all the nouns. I looked up all the synonyms, all the definitions. And it is a lot of work. Um, so I just took stuff and I started realizing that words, you know, have different meanings and stuff like that. And you can kind of play with words a little bit too. Um, we know Forrest has said that also he bends a little. Um, so, well, so if you're saying that you changed up your solve based on overlooking New Mexico. So in the last couple of months, based on the interview, you've changed it up a little bit. Um, since the interview. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. I mean, he basically, you know, said he, he doesn't believe he can't believe people are overlooking New Mexico as much as they are. And mm-hmm. so I just, I said, you know what, let me just look. And I started looking and I said, well, why don't I do this? Why don't I just look at the poem and do what he tells us to do, figure out the poem, stop looking at maps. So I started looking at the poem, dissecting it. And then I did start doing research on New Mexico and the warm waters, what they are. So now is this a failed solve or do you believe this solve is still correct? 
I believe, and I'll leave that up to other people. I right. believe the treasure is at this location and it is difficult to retrieve. Um, the reason he says, you know, have someone in the car and leave it running is for a reason. The reason he tells you to bring a flashlight is for a reason. Um, there's a lot of clues that he really sprinkled throughout the book and in front of us uh, that you're going to find out hopefully here in the next 20, 30 minutes. So then I, why are you giving up the solve that the chest might be at? Because that's what people are going to ask. Um, they're going to see at the location that it's at, you have to be a little bit of a rebel to retrieve it, and you might have some consequences from retrieving it. Now, if somebody goes there and actually finds it, how would you feel based on what you're about to show? If somebody goes and finds it next week, I mean, how would you feel about that? Good for them. Okay. For All them. right. I'm glad. I'm glad they solved it, or I helped. could help them get to the treasure. Right. Uh, you know, they, they still got to get to the last clue, and the last clue is, uh, I'll go over that. It's a little, it's a little tricky, but, um, and the location's a little tricky. But. So let me ask you a question. If Forrest put out, this is a hypothetical, but I want to ask you. The only question that I kicked myself that I didn't ask him was, do you have to break any laws to be able to retrieve the chest? I if I would ask, it. let's say he did, just for the sake of discussion, if he answered it and said no, would you then discount this off? Um, technically I'm not sure. I, I believe you might be breaking a law here. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not familiar with the laws. I didn't have time to jump that far into it, but I think you would be. Well, the guy uh, told you, right. That you would be breaking a lot. Like you couldn't do it. Well, you you're not allowed to disturb the, these areas. Okay. Um, so I don't know what the consequences are. Are they going to, you know, say, hey, you got to leave? Or, you know, if you go move something real quick and find something underneath it, and right. then you hightail it out of there, technically, if they find out later, are they going to come back and say, you touched that and you moved it? Um, we're pressing charges against you for, you know, damaging or I don't know. Okay, don't know. well, let's just jump right into it. Because now everybody's well, like, what's he talking about? Where is he at? <laughs> we know it's in New Mexico. I've gleaned that much. There's, so. there's definitely some risk versus reward here. I believe Force has mentioned that. And he said, you got to be a rebel. And he doesn't like authority. So, you um, know, I'm a little shocked right now because a lot of the room is agreeing. And I, I don't. So I don't know why, though, because you're exactly right. He's never said it. But now I'm kicking myself. I just assumed. What? That's a that great question. You should for you break to the ask law next time you talk to <laughs> Well, <him. laughs> from what you just said, wouldn't those rules apply in Yellowstone National Park? A lot of people think it's there. If I'm moving around rocks, is that illegal? I mean, I don't know what the actual no, laws are. Around rocks and um, logs, you sure? And you can't dig. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's what like, I'm I, like I know in Yellowstone, you're not allowed to get close to the geyser. You're supposed to stay back, or you oh, can right. get arrested. Yeah, so things right. like that. But where I'm about to show you is a, a little bit different. And uh, I think you'll see why. I hope uh, the case I'm about to present to everybody <laughs> is compelling, and they maybe they like it or they don't. You know? Okay, hopefully we'll, we'll see. You can share your screen, and let's uh, let's do it. Let's roll, Phil. Everybody, right. <laughs> roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, I'm going to start out first by explaining. What oh, is that you? Like. Hopefully, that's not you on that. What rock? What's wrong? I just oh. saw the rocks and thought, don't you're re steal that. Oh, We're hoping you're not repelling down anything. <laughs> so in the very beginning of the cover here on the um, Thrill of the Chase, he tells us right here, um, with a little six imagination, pack. maybe six-pack celebrate. Uh, anyone can get lucky, but it takes metal enough to strike the trail and enough confidence in a maverick to know that the treasure is really there for the taking. He told us right there we need to strike a trail. He sprinkled, he said he sprinkled clues throughout the book. Um, he also talks about um, Born Too Late chapter. Um, today's archaeologists tell you you should not save the past. You should save the past for the future, and I could not disagree more. Isn't that anti-education? The future will never arrive, and someday is always too late for the present. Every room that is not excavated is a book that I will never read. That is unacceptable. Um, you know, this is, you know, obviously he talks about where he excavated here and brushed the corner. And he talks about the southwest corner in the book and also the south corner. He brings it up another time on another excavation, I think, in uh, San Lazaro. So it's San, yeah, that's right. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he also talks about here, he shows uh, uh, the derelict. Um, he talks about the place. I once flew over the Santa Fe Trail, and this goes right through his backyard, by the mm-hmm. way. Yeah, following it from Fort Union to Kansas City, and from 500 feet above the ground, the trail was visible even through plowed fields. So you can actually see a lot of this. We are going, we're striking the trail, and we are going all the way to Fort Union, which is an hour and a half from Forest House. And let me get to here. Fort Union, New Mexico. Fort Union is in. It's in um, the. The county of Mora. Oh, gotcha. M-O-R-A, yeah, New Mexico. Gotcha. And it's just outside of Watrous. And I will show you. So are you exactly. saying that you think the it in Begin It is the Santa Fe Trail? It is actually, he talks about it is an expedition. Where he's, oh, okay. It is, where he's sending us on an expedition. And okay. I'll explain here why. He says your quest to cease. So your quest is those engaged in such an expedition right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. To go on a quest. And expedition is an excursion, journey, or voyage made by, made for someone's specific purpose or as of war or expo- exploration. So Fort Union was built uh, during the Civil War, and I was just there last week. I was there for three days, took a ton of pictures. I'm actually doing a book report in school for it. So. Now, you were there for Boots on the Ground? Yes, I was. Okay, oh, so everybody. So those there. that okay. you were asking, have you ever been Boots on the Ground? There's your answer. So I took uh, a lot of pictures, and I'm going to start out by showing here. First, I wanted to show you something, Christy. Uh, you've always asked about this sweater of his. Um, Purple well, sweater. You know Let, yeah, let's do the book symbolisms first. How about that? Okay. So this is uh, – he does some symbolisms in the book. Um, this is the first one, Thrill the Chase. So you've got the uh, – the three pictures on the front, this actually symbolizes there's three forts at Fort Union. They built the first fort, ended up being on private property. Uh, they tried to uh, seize the property from that guy. Uh, he didn't want to do it. I think it was Ames and Butler were the original owners, and they've changed their name to uh, First Union and Grazing Company, which kind of rings a little bit with uh, was it One Land and Cattle. One Land, one land and Cattle Company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so these three pictures here actually symbolizes the fort. Fort one, fort two is here, which it's, it's called the Fort Star, and this is Fort three up here at the top. And he told us we are fishing for a star, and the fort there is known as the Star Fort. And on the front of the book, he actually gave us a little bit of a hint here too: the shiny golden eagle. Uh, and I'll get to that in just a second. The uh, shadow man here, there's actually, you know, he talked about going in the field and throwing his watch, and uh, he mm-hmm. references time. There's actually a sundial at this fort that um, is got a marker about 10 feet from it that is a lat, true north latitude marker. I'll wow. show that I like the idea of just. a sundial. That's pretty cool. Yes. And... So let's go here to, uh, let's do the sweater real quick. Uh, Forrest in his purple sweater. You know, he's always wearing a lot of purple sweaters. Mm-hmm. And Fort Union oh, right here. Oh, nice. Okay. In purple. National Park Service. It is a national park. Um, and I'm going to show the distance real quick on here first i'll show you um it is 90 miles from santa fe to fort union it's uh it took me i stayed in the middle of uh, santa fe at is it, uh, hotel chamayo i think it is beautiful hotel by the way um and it was about an hour and a half from the middle of uh, santa fe there um so it's 90 miles he actually references 90 miles when he talks about bringing Olga on a trip to Taos. But the weird thing is, is when you're flying, and he was talking about flying with her, when you fly to the Taos Ski Valley, now don't get me wrong, he could have flown another 15 miles, but it's, as the crow flies, it's 75 miles. So I thought it was interesting that 90 miles, it was actually 90 miles from the edge of Santa Fe to uh, Fort Union. Um, Let me back up here. So 
uh, the purple sweater. You saw that. Uh, he also references in the book, um, here's the book quote here. Why do the yellow and purple flowers flourish where no one is there to see? The answer is at last obvious to me. And I didn't pick up on this until I was actually there. But all around Fort Union is nothing but purple and yellow flowers. There's the tidewater mm. marker, which is water high. I will get to that in a minute. Oh, interesting. Flowers. Okay. Now, somebody just asked in the chat, they said, is Fort Union in the Rocky Mountains? Is, you it just is, showed it the... It is at the San de Cristo. Is that what it's called? The edge of the end of the Rocky Mountains? It's right there in that it, it is considered at the very edge of the Rocky Mountains. And you just showed the Too Far to Walk map. It is in the highlighted area, correct, of the Too Far to Walk map? Yes, it is. And I think it's Forrest has said is anywhere, you know, anywhere on this map. So, okay. And if you look, you know, everybody's saying, you know, hey, you got to be at least eight and a half miles north of the northernmost point of Santa Fe. And I just want to show you this. City limits. So this is, this is uh, the heart rate here is Fort Union. And if you take from the northernmost part, that's eight and a half miles, and then that's 16 miles. So the fort, right. actually, this is directly due north also. Okay. It's about 16 miles north of the most northern part of Santa Fe. So here is uh, the true north. I'm going to show that now. There's the true, lat, true north lat marker. U.S. Meridian and latitude marker. It's and I, cool. here's where, you know, I, I picked up on that with the uh, degrees show the inclination of magnetic compass north from true map north. And that really stuck out. So here's the lat marker right here. And there's the sundial. The sundial's pointed directly north for it to work properly. Hmm. And that was one of the confirmers for me also. So uh, stop here. for just a second. Where are the, the trees and the, all the stuff he says you're going to see around there? There's trees actually right along Wolf Creek, which runs okay. right along the... Uh, you just can't see it from and, that angle. And, okay. and there's, I mean, you can see the trees up in the, the right corner of this picture up there on the hill. And then off in the distance, there's trees. There's all kinds of animals I'll get into. I, I had antelope that were 40 yards from me, uh, big herds of antelope. There's elk there. I had a coyote pass by me. There's a fox, rabbit. Um, I want to make one thing clear because there's been like three people that have asked. Um, if you're in here tonight thinking we're showing the treasure chest, that that's not what we're doing. <laughs> no, we're so, not. <laughs> yeah. But, so. I, but I'm going to tell you where I think it is. I don't yeah. mind. Right, Some, right. But I, okay. several people are like, suspense, is he going to show the chest soon? Um, no, he's showing a, He's <laughs> dun, showing us all. Or, yeah, exactly. or I, is he? <laughs> no, I, no. Right. <laughs> he's like, so surprise. Yeah. <laughs> There's the ruins in the background. These are the uh, adobe uh, homes that are left over from the fort. Uh, they're, okay. they're known as the Brown Adobe Homes. Um, so this is the, my home of Brown. Now, uh, I did find a, uh, and I thought this was interesting, but I don't think it ties in. There was a Will Dr. William T. Brown uh, that did open a, um, a uh, oh, what is it called? Sanatorium? No. Oh, I Sanatorium. can't remember the name of it. I think I have oh. it on here, though, in one of the files. I'll show you. But anyway, so here's the sundial. Pretty cool. Uh, there's a path that runs all the way around that you're supposed to stay on. You're not supposed to go off path. They're very strict about that. Um, so what led you to this location? In other words, where to be? Well, where to warm waters yeah. halt? <laughs> yeah, I'll get, I'll get to that in just a second. Okay. And uh, so... Um, one of the things here, too, was another confirmer for me I thought was pretty cool. He talks about do not touch, do not touch a lot through in a couple of the chapters, you know, especially with the um, teachers with ropes. And at the bottom, he says, please touch. We are responsible. This is at the uh, in the museum there at the fort. I thought that stuck out like a sore thumb to me. Touch these. Um, oh, you I can play it. Pretty, oh, I see. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that they had that. Um and then, uh, now I will the, say I'm surprised about how many are there. The Ojo Caliente solve I had, there was a little museum and it had the same thing. And I died. I was like, mm. yes, it's a comfort. <laughs> and yeah. So here's, uh, it's called the company that owns this is, uh, Union Land and Grazing Company. And then I just thought it was kind of interesting how one horse land and cattle company, it's kind of, 
I don't know if I'm reaching there, but there's a little bit of a coincidence there. Um, there used to be a uh, baseball team here in the 1800s for the fort. He brings up baseball. Uh, they played baseball there. They did a lot of uh, – you go to the fort, you can actually see all the activities they did. They played poker, which poker actually uh, – Kind of uh, started right around right after the Civil War. I think it was uh, 1859 or somewhere around there. They started using the Joker, which is actually another is uh, <laughs> the quote with the. Alan K says, cards. "If Dizzy Dean was on the team, then I'm sold." <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty. I don't funny. think. Uh, I don't think he was on there, but right um, here, I'll show you real quick the animals, and then I'll get over to the Saul. Uh, this, this yeah, was, uh, the, the crowd is starting to grow restless for the song. Uh, we told them well, you're, you're walking you'll, through this. so You'll, you'll like it. Uh, oh, nice. So here's the antelope. Uh, this one was uh, when I was driving, but this one was actually, you can see the ruins at the bottom of the picture here. This was 40 yards from me. Um, here's the coyote that crossed the road right there by me at the fort. Uh, there was two of them, actually. I only got one of them. Oh, here's wow, the big cool. herd of antelope. And... When I got there one morning, they open at eight o'clock and they close at four. Um, I had just missed a herd of elk that had come through, and I really wanted to get a picture of them, but he said they ran off up into the trees up there. Hmm. So, uh, kind of missed out on that. They 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 went through around six a.m. and the park, you know, that's not up till eight. So, all right. So let's start with uh, where warm waters halt. Let's go mm-hmm. ahead and get to it. Oh, hold on. There's the Joker. I just wanted to talk about that real quick. So uh, the Joker originated in the United States in the United States during the Civil War and was created as a trump card. And <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have ever played cards. I mean, I know you well, yeah, you've had you played uh, Texas Hold'em. My <laughs> World bad. Series of Fan, uh, two weeks. Yeah. I play Texas Hold'em, but I play spades also, and we ended up playing yep. with uh, Jokers a lot. Big I Joker. Play we, we played yeah. Tonk on the aircraft carrier. I, <laughs> I've played spades for probably 25 years, so I enjoy it. Um, but there's a big joker, little joker, and a lot of times, a lot of the cards you'll see, there's a star on them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he meant to be that as a hint or not, but oh well. I thought it was pretty neat. All right, we're Warm Waters Hall. I showed you the distance, 16 miles north. Um, the distance from Santa Fe to there, mm-hmm. uh, about an hour and a half from his house. And so basically, I did research on Warm Waters and waters that halt in New Mexico. What I found out was there's perennial waters that flow all year long, rivers, streams, lakes, or not lakes, but uh, creeks. And then there's intermittent that um, stop at some point during the year. And I also, from the book, I, the, the clue about his brother Skippy dying in 90 foot of water, I think it was in Cozumel when he was diving, mm-hmm. Um, something about, you know, being in salt water and that's considered warmer waters. And I did a little research on that too, but this particular lake here is Northeast of, um, the road you turn down to go to the fort. And, uh, this is my war warm waters hall. And there's five intermittent springs that actually, uh, run. You can see them right here that run into this salt lake. Now, the lake, the salinity level of this lake is high. There's no fish or anything in it, Um, and it's right here. So this is Wagon Mound, and this is the highway you take down. Now, this is called the Pan American. It was part of the Pan American Highway. This is the Can-Am Highway, and Can-Am, if I can get to it, this is the actual distance from the Salt Lake. It's 22, I believe, 22 and a half miles down to the exit. And then uh, you put in below the home of Brown, which is the Brown Adobes. And then it's seven and a half miles. It is isolated to that spot. Which way I'm going here? Oh, wrong way. So you picked Salt Lake for where Warm Waters Hall. Not just because right. of the name, it actually has salt in the lake. That's where it's the name comes sal- from. Yeah, it's salty water. Now, is there and anywhere else in New Mexico that also has like salt water like that? There's another salt lake, but I could not find anything for it. Okay. So, yeah, I bailed on it. And this, okay. this one has five intermittent springs, which they halt. So, um, so I did a little uh, – I, I dug deep into salt water, and – um, 
you know, the freezing points, the heat retention of it. The sun actually warms the water on the top, and uh, salt water actually retains the heat a lot better than fresh water. Um, okay, see, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Okay. Yes, heat absorption and freezing. Uh, salt water takes a lot longer to uh, to freeze. And typically in the oceans, you know, you, the warm water's at the top, and the deeper you go in the ocean in salt water, the colder the water gets. Mm-hmm. So the warmer mm-hmm. water is always at the top. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just had some things here about uh, salt water and the, uh, um, the heat retention in it and stuff like that. And then this is also, I found this online. I thought this was neat. Uh, it shows the heat retention of salt water versus fresh water and the degrees difference here. People could freeze the screen later and look at it. I dug deep into it, you know, just to try and make sure uh, I wasn't, you know, talking. Is there any place that you put your, your toe in it and (laughs) it is actually like warm to the touch? Honestly, I didn't drive over to it. I was so eager to get to the spot. Um, But you said there was hot, there's springs that feed into it, right? Yeah, there are five, five springs that feed into it and they do halt. It it should, if you look at them, those springs up, those springs are intermittent springs, which they do halt at some point during the year. Um, I, I found that very interesting. So, and the salt water, you know, the hint from the book, I, I take that as Skippy dying in salt water. That's where warm water salt when you, is when you die, basically. Um, interesting. Or when Skippy died. So you so, find a warm waters, and now you got to take it in the canyon down. So I'm assuming you're saying right. you didn't go there. So online you found, right, the canyon? Yep. Okay. Yep. And is so, it contiguous? Steve is asking if all your clues are contiguous. Yeah, let me show you this. <laughs> not Kyle Sandoz in the chat. Uh, I remember that guy. Sorry. So people are going to like this. Um, so the Can-Am is considered the contiguous highway of the United States. Yeah. No. <laughs> there you go, Steve. Literal there contiguous. Boris kind of sprinkled this clue right in interviews right in front of us, and we, we don't think anybody caught it, but uh, I did American research and found freeway. out. So it's the Can-Am highway. Um is part of the uh, Pan American Highway, and it is the contiguous highway of the United States. Actually, North America. It's so simple, everyone. Why are we <laughs> thinking it means something different? It's right there on the screen. He just right. sprinkled it right, threw it right in our face. Right Come in on, our people. Face. <laughs> so he said right here, uh, I tend to use some words that aren't in the dictionary and others that are. I bend a little. Mm-hmm. Um, so to get it where Walmart's halt and take it in the Can-Am down, so That's, you're uh, oh I see. So you're saying it's a play on words. Canyon is Can Am on the map. Can Am, yep. Take mm. it in the Can Am down. Not far, but too far to walk. And uh, you know, that's the um that's the distance from here. This is the Can Am highway coming down. Okay. And then uh which is the contiguous highway. Right. And then Homa Brown is here, and this is actually well, I got it. I think I turned it just a little, but it is actually north is pretty close to this. Um, so, so you found where Warm Waters Halt, you found your canyon that you're going down on a map from home, and then you're looking in the general area to find a home of Brown, basically, right? That you're saying, okay, there's the home of Brown. Yes, the home okay. of Brown. And, and I talked to people there. I'm like, you know, hey, what's famous around here that's Brown? And they said, oh, well, that's the Brown Adobes out at Fort Union. And I said, mm. okay. That's interesting. And then you're saying um, not far but too far to walk is driving. So you're driving you're down driving, the canyon. Yeah, that's, yeah. it's total. The canyons of road miles. is different. Okay. Yeah, so uh, let's see. The home of Brown is the adobes at the fort. You can see them. Uh, I got the, the definition Brown. of adobe here, uh, an adobe house, which they had houses there. They had all kinds of stuff. Um area for doing uh, blacksmith, um, crowds for horses, stuff like that. Uh, here's more of the adobes. And actually, you find it interesting. Um, I don't know if he meant in the first thing, and I kind of took it as this, and I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's confirmation bias, but the bricks, the red bricks, were actually quarried from Las Vegas. The there, Las Vegas is a little city that's about 20 miles west of here. Las Vegas, New Mexico, everybody. And for those of you that don't everybody. know, that's yeah. where Forrest's um, grandson has a business. That's oh, I the, didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, hint of riches new and old, maybe right there. Lost, the bricks came, were quarried from Las Vegas. Okay. So, okay, so I got World Waters Halt. You took it down the canyon, Can-Am Highway. You put in below yeah. the home of Brown. From there, it's no place for the meek. 
How do we? How did you put that one together? If that's a if, if that's, that's one a clue, clue, of course, and you're solved, you may think it's not. Yeah. Yep. So Meek, um, Meek is uh, someone who's gentle and quiet. Um, like Capro. <laughs> Good grief. So quiet and gentle. And uh, so I looked up other words too. And actually at the trail, and let me bring up the uh, Santa Fe trail here. Um, it goes towards the mountain pass or the, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Is it Cimarron? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cimarron. I, okay. So it, it splits, it goes from Santa Fe up Northeast and then splits right at Fort union. So why is it that I must go? And I took that as actually the why not asking a question. Why must I go? It, he's saying, so why is it that I must go? And, uh, Cimarron actually means wild or untamed. And he's saying that it's no place for the meek, which for the quiet or gentle, because think about it. It's the civil war. It's probably rowdy. Uh, you know, you're not talking about guys that are quiet walking around. They're probably all, you know, they're all soldiers ready to go to battle. So this um, isn't a place on the map. This is just confirming where you're at. You're in the right location. Well, the trail splits into a Y right there. You could either go towards oh, okay. Cimarron or you can go towards the mountain pass. Yeah. And Cimarron is the opposite. So I kind of took that as uh, it's going that direction. We got a super chat from Justin Barwick. He says, hey, Mike, what's up, man? What's going on, brother? Thank you for the super chat. We do appreciate it. I think it. everybody's going to like this the most. Talks about uh, when people find his car in the parking lot. Here you go. The parking lot's in Omega. So that is at Fort Union. This now I have a Fort question for you. Why the double Omega? I, I, beginning and end. This is the end. I don't. I don't know. Okay. Man. I just didn't maybe. know if there was one like right next to it there, and then maybe, it would blow my mind. Maybe because the beginning could be the top of the Rocky Mountains up in Canada, and this is the end because it's the end of the Rocky Mountains. I. I or this is the end of uh Is it a circle? Scroll down. Is it a circle or is it an omega? When you, oh, no, I see. So it's not an edge. Right it's here. Okay. It here. This is just the road. Kind of looks through. like an omega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the uh, the parking lot itself is in the shape of an omega. And he mentions the parking lots. So you think Forrest parked right here, made two trips from his car to hide it, right? Jumped back in and got out of there. Yep. Okay. The end is ever drawing nigh. Uh, the omega means end. So let me go back here, and I will show you. Let me get to this. Let me show you. Um, oh, when I asked you about that folder earlier, I thought it was so this is personal. A, this <laughs> is the parking lot, and this I'll get to the end here. But this is the hospital, and to the very corner of the hospital, it's four hundred and twenty-three feet. It's within five hundred feet to the back corner right. of the. Uh, and Are those a, ruins the adobe you were talking about, the home of Brown, or no? Yeah, that, that yeah, is that. Is, that is the picture. This is okay. Brown, yeah, and I'll show pictures of that. Gotcha. And okay. then the rest of the fort's up here. But this is a hospital that uh, served the fort, um, the best hospital within 500 miles, it says on the sign. Okay. I thought that was pretty neat. So they, they uh, uh, have a lot of information at the sign here, and I'll get into the signs here in just a second. I was going to so say, go, how would you get the upper right-hand corner for where you think it is? But, yeah, you'll get there. Okay. Well, I was just showing it's within five minutes oh, of the oh, parking okay. lot. But, um, so we're going to have questions, and you yeah. have about yeah. a little bit less than 10 minutes. So just oh, goodness. keep well, that let in me mind. Keep going. It goes okay. quick. I know. Okay, so uh, there'll be no paddle up your creek. Let me show you creek definition. Let me get through this real quick. Okay. <laughs> so part of the creek definition in dictionary is a narrow or winding passage. Or hidden recess. Ooh, ooh. There's the Santa Fe Trail. Okay. Ooh. See the trail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Recess. That's pretty huh? cool. Okay. There'll be no paddle up your creek because it's not a creek. It's a, it's a uh, recessed. <laughs> now there's one there's passage. one I haven't heard. There's no paddle up your creek because it's not a creek, everybody. That, I mean, it's interesting. I never would have occurred to me that it's guess a what? recessed. Okay, it's and then that creek. goes straight yeah. back to Forest House because his backyard's at the old Santa Fe Trail. Yep, sure and does. another super chat from Justin. Santa Fe, it was uh, you could actually it, the road crosses over the uh, Santa Fe Trail back there. 
Justin says he's yeah, driving no, I've been to there. I actually walked back because he's like, Oh, it's back there. I'm like, I'm going. Cause I was thinking, what if the treasure's back there? Or something? I know it's not. Going. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I went back. There. Justin says he's driving to temple. He's a trucker temple, Texas, I assume. So thanks for watching. Be safe yeah. on the road. If you're watching at the same time. All right. So we're, uh, we're at, um, just heavy loads and water high. So you look up the definition of loads, uh, a quantity that can be or usually is carried at one time as in a cart. Right. And they used wagons back then. Yeah. And I, he yeah. here's a little bit of a sprinkle of the clue he gave us. I've looked up the Santa Fe Trail and, and loads being the cart. I went, yeah, I've, well, years ago, I kind of went through that yeah. whole thing. Couldn't find anywhere to make it work, but yeah, for sure. So, and then also in the book, uh, another symbolism he used with the gypsies and the wagons. All right, let's move on. And if you're putting K Pro, I'm grabbing the questions, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna let them get through the rest of it before, um, before I start asking the questions for a little bit. So, uh, water high is there. Actually, is a tide water marker right here. That's uh, part of the path you walk. Um, in and you can see the adobes in the background. Mm -hmm. And here's the tide water marker up close above tide water mark. I like the tide water marker for water high. I mean, that, that makes yep. sense. And, yeah. And there it is again. Um, this is the one that actually had the purple, purple flowers uh, next to it during the, you know, summer and stuff like that. Um, so that's water high. Uh, and hopefully people love the blaze. The blaze, you can see from an airplane. And Forrest talked about um, flying over Fort Union at 500 foot. And he said people have been within 500 foot of it. But he had been talking about when he was in his plane flying to Kansas. Uh, here's an overview of the fort. Fort 1 is actually up here when they built it on private property and they didn't know it. The surveyor was incorrect. Oh, wow. Thinking that, thinking that that wasn't uh, government land and it was private. This is all private property over here. From here, Wolf Creek to the left is private property. Um, and the, the landowner only lets people come look at this fort one day a year, the first Saturday in September. So if you ever want to come look at this fort, you got to go during that first Saturday of September. So here's the definition of blaze, uh, bright, hot, lean, glow, sparkling, bright, lit, brightness. Um, and this is actually a layout of Fort 2 is the star here. It's an eight-pointed star. This is Fort 3 over here with the – over here is the uh, – Hospital. Hospital. Okay. So let me go here. This is actually the fort uh, up close and the trail that you could take out onto it. There's a little short trail that stops right here, or you could take it down. Uh, during the winter months, they don't have the can in there, but during the summer months, they, they do take it out. They don't want it getting uh, – They've got two of them. They've got um, a steel one, I believe, and a uh, bronze one that gets uh, the patina on it turns green. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, but they do wheel it out there, and they do shoot blanks out of it too. Um, this is uh, – So what is the blaze? Is, oh, okay. The blaze is the star. He said, uh, he said symbolism in the book is where – you know, we're fishing for a star here. So you have to see it from uh, from above. In other words, either an well, aerial view or Google, Google Maps. Maps or yeah. You can see it from an airplane flying in. I mean, I flew in, and I, 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 I don't know the route that we took was correct or not, but, I mean, I flew from uh, – I took off – let's see, I left Tampa, stopped in, switched planes in Dallas, and I tried to look out the right side where I was of the plane – yeah. and I, I don't – I couldn't tell where I was, but I did look for it. Um, you so, can see it from a plane because it – there is um, there is uh, other pictures that are online, I believe, are from a drone and planes too. So. But that star okay, is pretty so you're big. Your right? final spot, because I we have tons of questions. Okay, okay. Well, so me... this is the blaze. Yeah. Is the star? That's the yeah, symbolism in the book. That's cool. But it doesn't give you to a twelve inch by twelve inch location. In other words, I could well, see the blaze marks well, the fort. But how do you know where it is in the fort yet? Oh, you're, okay. You're, you're jumping to the end, Mike. We're not there yet. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, so your quest to see. So quest, Thanks, look at the definition of quest. Okay. Those engaged in such an expedition. So he basically he put us on an expedition. And I want to show you this. 
uh, expedition definition is uh, excursion journey or voyage made for some specific purpose as of war or exploration. And there's a metal, it's an, this is an eight sided fork, okay? And there's actually a medal that's called the Expeditionary Medal that get, is given to all military that uh, are in active duty. It's an eight starred, eight pointed star with a golden eagle on the front. And that's called the Expeditionary Medal. And I believe that's part of the clue too, because he sent us on an expedition. And then the coin on the front is highlighted on the book, which I think is uh, part of the symbolism. Wait, go back too. for a second. To, um, to the one with the one more when he said he was an architect and all the lines crossed I'm just saying I'm just saying all the lines are crossing there <laughs> okay somebody asked earlier what so, this is an earthworks fort they actually built these are like ditches and it is so cool you can see this from go to google maps and you'll see it I mean it's huge and you can walk out to this point here and then it walks down the path comes down to the cannon which is down here and um, I thought it was really neat. I mean, when I started finding some of this stuff, I'm like, I just, you know, my, my adrenaline started going. Let's go to uh, Terry Scant with Marvel Gaze. Terry definition, to delay, be tardy, linger with expectation. Okay, so this property is located, it's part of the Mora land grant. It's in Mora County. Okay, and Mora means to delay or linger. Um, linger or delay. See it right here? Okay. And uh, so I took that as another clue. And then we have Marvel Gaze. Marvel definition. Um, something that causes wonder or archaic astonishment. So I looked up archaic. Primitive, ancient, or old. And... Uh, so I took that as, okay, well, that matches up. Uh, it's an old, you know, archaic gaze. You're looking at this old place. And then, so why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? This is the Santa Fe Trail from Forrest's house down. You know, you're obviously on the road right there next mm -hmm. to it. But the trail, when you get to here, it splits into a Y. So why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? He's got a question, at, question mark at the end of it, but I don't think that was a question. I think he's messing with us. He's saying the why is where I must go, the why in the trail. Let me keep going because I know we're short on time. Uh, so hear me all and listen good. Look at the definition of listen. Gives one attention to sound, an act of listening to something. At the fort, there are signs everywhere at every section of rooms, ah, okay. and okay. there's a listen Audio. button. Yep. Now, this is where there's a little little problem with this. These are the old signs, and recently they got rid of all of them. Hmm. So all these listen buttons that are on all the signs everywhere in the park have all been removed, and they just happened recently. These were there for many years, and now they're gone. So... But I thought that was pretty neat. So that's the, the listen. He's telling us to listen. You're listening to that. Your effort will be worth the cold. Um, there's the hospital. So I think he's kind of just playing with us here as far as your effort will be worth the cold. Well, where do you go if you have a cold? You go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I think he's telling us that you have to go to the hospital. And if you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Now, at this hospital, the hallway here, the rooms, and the front porch are all made of wood. Now, obviously, they're gone now, and what's left are the dirt, is the dirt floor. Um, the problem with me going here and spending three days is the park rangers, there's a fence here, and I'll show that here in just a second. You are not allowed to go near them. Oh, you can't even go. So you can go where that parking area is, but you can't walk over to the hospital. You can go to here. So there's a sign right here at where the, the, the triangle of the thing is. 
there's a uh, fence that blocks you going towards, I mean, you could really walk around it if you want to. The parking lot's out this direction. Um, but you come from the uh, office to right here to the, to the point. And from here to, there's a cistern, which cisterns are, uh, they hold water, rainwater. Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. So the furthest cistern is 196 feet. Um, this one, I think, was around 140. Um, so this is a close-up of it. Here's the two cisterns. There's a section over here where they had the wood. They uh, kept wood. Here's the wooden floor down the hallway, all the rooms, the wooden floors, and then the uh, front porch. Um, there's from the parking lot again, 423 feet to the furthest corner. So you're within 500 feet at the parking lot and someone could technically walk around the corner right here just walk over to the fence and walk around it uh and he did say he got lucky you know that you know he nobody was looking uh nobody was paying attention and i think that's where why is because uh when i was there there was the first day there was some rangers that were there that had a meeting but they all left except for two guys uh one guy ended up leaving for to go grab food and a bunch of stuff and it was only one guy there. There was no people there when I went. This place gets less than 11,000 visitors a year. Well, I don't know if it's gone up since then, but when I looked it up, that's what it said on um, their information. Right. Um, so this is a close-up. This is from the path to the corner. It's only 177 feet to there. So it's within 200 feet. Um, and let me see. So many people are saying, but he said not a man-made structure. And you're saying it's in the hospital, which is a man-made structure. Is there a he explanation? Says it's not associated with it. Let's get him to explain associated. That's so, do you I mean think. that that you can still be inside a man-made structure and not associated with a man-made structure? Exactly, because I mean, and I've emailed him, and of course, he's not going to email back a question like this. But I said, I said, Mr. Finn, if I take your 2,000-year-old gold mine frog and I walk into a Walmart with it and I set it down on a shelf and I walk out. Is, is that Mayan frog associated with, with the Walmart or I don't look at it that way. I look at it as it's associated with the Mayan culture and okay. um, I don't think it's associated with the building personally, but I feel the okay. same way with the treasure. I mean, I think, um, I don't think it's really associated with the building, with the building itself or the location. So I, now, how do you, well, first I'm going to say there is a ton of positive in the room of I don't agree with the solve, but there's so many pieces and parts to it. There's depths to the solve. It was really nicely presented and well put together, which we typically have not seen. This is the... I, I spent hours on this getting ready for tonight. <laughs> yeah, which is... Well, yeah. other people have spent that long too, and then they don't share, or then they it kind of falls apart. But I know Mike has some questions, and then I have a ton of questions from the room. Let well, me bring up the map of the overall place and uh, let's see where I got it right here. So you think it's in that hospital ruins, but you don't know where? Like it's somewhere in there? Well, you're not allowed to go over there. And believe me, Mike, if I could have, uh, if I could have snuck over there, um, I don't know what the law is on going over there. And the reason I think, you know, they close at 4 p.m. every day. It's eight open eight eight a.m. to 4 p.m. Four says you need a flashlight, and I think you need a flashlight because when the park closes. You need to go in when it's dark and no one's around. You don't get caught. And he said a person, you know, a little bit of a rebel is going to probably be the person that finds this. Um, he doesn't now, like why authority. does he want his? Why does he want his bones there? Why is this his special spot? Why is a hospital you know, a special spot? Because I, some people think it's the opposite. Like he wanted to be out where it's beautiful rather than dying in a hospital. So what is, what's that? I can tell you the land around this whole area is beautiful, but okay. I, I can't answer that. Maybe Forrest can answer that if it's ever, you know, we ever find it. Oh, if that's a not, part of the story. Okay. Yeah, it's a part of the story. And he said, hmm. you know, it is, this place is a part of the story. And, you know, my personal opinion is, is I think Forrest, he says two can keep a secret if one of them is dead is, I think Forrest knew somebody back that worked here back in the... Oh. Okay. And they allowed him to excavate here, possibly maybe look through the ruins and stuff. And then he came, he knew a hidey spot. And then he ended up coming back when he decided to hide the treasure. He knew exactly where he wanted to hide it. He was going to make it work. So I think he may have done, knew somebody and done some excavating here. And uh, that's part of the story. But I don't know. You know, it's something that the finder is going to figure out, he said, you know. 
Well, okay. so what about Forrest saying, if you solve the nine clues, it'll take you right to it? And then he's told Cynthia, does your solve take you to a 12-inch by 12-inch location? So it seems to me, to me, I don't well, think a blaze is I a big thing on I Google I can't go Earth. to the last clue because you're not allowed over there. So I, maybe it is, there is an exclamation, exclamation, explanation to it, right. excuse me. Right. And I'm not able to see it. So, um you so know, if you're if, if you wants yeah. to sneak over there and take a look, go for it. You know, so if you're done know. sharing, go ahead and stop so we can talk. We'll stop sharing the screen and kind of talk about it. Um, um, or I've if you got, got more to share, thing. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got one other thing. I mean, there is a couple other possibilities and I'll show you one other thing because I took that as your, your effort will be worth the cold. He's kind of playing a little with that sentence. You know, he doesn't mean cold weather. He means or cold water or something like that. He means uh, actual cold. Um, See, that's a different interpretation map. too. I like it that it's. I've never heard thought of that. Thought of it that way before. So that's interesting. Now let me see if I can find the. Uh, there's a map here that I have. Let me see if this is it. Yeah, this is it. So if you look back here, this is like all these were uh, the adobe were with bricks and clay and stuff. Um, but right here in the back, these were the horse corrals, and this is another spot that's off limits. You're not allowed to go over here. The path comes along this way and cuts over this way. All this is off limits. And right here in the middle was a little well. And then right here is the ice house. And this is the only section of Fort 3 that was wood was used to build it. So I thought your effort will be worth the cold. Maybe it's the ice house. And, uh, if you're brave and in the wood, which you have to go off trail to get to this. And there's like literally right here, it's all flat. There's nothing there anymore, except for where the ice house was. There is um, a ditch kind of in the ground because I guess they kept the ice lower in the ground. So it would stay cold. And then the other thing is, here's another cool thing. Um, I looked up cisterns to figure out what they are. And uh, this is, um, this is the definition of a cistern. Uh, it's basically, it's it used to, to hold water, liquids, uh, usually rainwater. And that's what they used it here at the fort. But I want you to check this out. It's also called uh, Latin for box. Hmm. And it tells people to get back in the box. And that's why I highlighted the second cistern at the hospital within 200 feet. I just want you know, I thought that, well, maybe he, it's in the cistern. And, um, you know, there's something over there with the bricks or something. You can, there's a, a symbol on one of them and you can move it. Um, but here's the cistern, the far one, all the way out the very end of the fort. And you can kind of see how there, there's pipes that run off in the ground on each side. They filled it in. Uh, many years ago, somebody came in, they were paid to destroy them. But here's what they used to look like. This is actually the cistern with a dome over the top of it. And there was a little ladder that you can climb into it. And these were deep. I mean, they weren't shallow like this, like they mm -hmm. are now. These are filled in now. So they filled them in so people and cattle would not fall into it many, many years ago. I mean, I, it may have been back in the 60s. Um, okay. So, um, let's see. That's another definition of cistern. And then uh, uh, it means box or chest. Latin for cistern, it means box or chest. I thought that was pretty interesting. And I'll show you one more thing, and then I'll take questions if you want. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so over at the – oh, I don't have these labeled. Okay, so these are some of the pictures that are inside the uh, – one of the adobes over there. And they're in the shape of kind of in a box. They are rock formations that are just stacked on top of each other. Mm-hmm. I found these very interesting. I went in, took pics of them. Um, there is wood on the other side of the wall right here. Because this is all like, uh, this is uh, two buildings right here that are butted up to each other. And on the other side, there was a bunch of wood. You can see the wood over there that are piled up on these same square rocks that are all in the shape of a square. They're all like cut, actual cut uh, stones. But um, oh, let me pull the map up. I gotta pull this up real quick. Sorry. Where is it? Um, the blaze.
uh, pull this picture up right here. Here it is. Okay, so from this, you see the path here? You're mm -hmm. coming down. That office is this direction, actually. It's, it's not far. I mean, if you keep walking down this path, you go right by the office and to the uh, hospital. Uh, but you can come down this path and stand right here. It's a little circle. And I saw something on Google Maps and um, ended up getting a picture of this. And I'm gonna, I, I won't disclose who walked over here because I don't believe you're allowed to walk on them. But there was somebody that was kind enough to walk over there and take a picture for me. And uh, I don't really know the person that well anyway. So. But um, they walked over, and I noticed this white thing that was sticking out. You can zoom in on it, and it, it, it sticks out pretty good. Um, but uh, went over to it. Not me. Sorry. Excuse me. They did. And saw this. So this rock, and this may have nothing to do with it. I just thought I had them take a picture, and I thought, wow, that looks kind of crazy. So if you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. And this, that section of rocks that are piled up, this rock, this rock right here actually used to be right here. You can see the outline of the dead grass and they took that rock and actually put it there and you could see it fit in the perfectly on the shape. And this rock had fallen in. There's actually a cavity here, this big square. This hmm. is about a uh, 12 inch by 12 inch rock, square rock that was sitting on top. Uh, between these rocks. It was kind of up on the four corners of it. And this rock was actually over here where the dead grass is, the outline of it. And that cavity uh, is a good foot deep. And I, I don't know, I just thought it was interesting because if you look right here, there's, it looks like, I saw the mark yeah, right there the on that rock. Right. And I zoomed in, or they zoomed in, excuse me, and they took a picture of it. And it looks like a big, with two little ones. Yeah, the three and I, marbles, yeah. And I went, hmm, that kind of looks right. like the marbles. So, Okay, so let's neat. start with questions since we have a lot of them. Yeah. Let me switch my screen um, back. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So Forrest talks about sitting under a tree at his favorite spot. Is yep. there a tree somewhere in that area? Uh, not at the fort. Um, yeah, at the fort. I mean, there's like down from, down from it, you know, by the creek or up in the hills right there, but. Okay. Well, and that's what the other person said. He's supposed to be sitting where there is sage. Is there sage in that area? Yes, there is. Okay. There's sage. There's a uh, um, juniper. There's um, pines. I think the was it pinion pines. Hmm. All that pinion in that nuts, area. and then he retracted that he meant because to say that pines. was an issue. Yeah. Okay. Because you can't uh, smell pinion nuts. <laughs> you can smell the pines, the pinion pines. Um, have, so someone, it, some of these get a little bit more cryptic. Um, have you solved the riddle in the poem? I don't oh, know. Yeah, what, you want to go over that? Uh, since yeah, I don't know well, what it means, sure. Yeah, we don't know what that means, but. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I just basically looked at, and I switched some words, and then he, he bends on words, too. So, uh, beginning where Walmart's hall, I looked up hall, and everybody knows that's a reference to, it's a military reference, but he's also talking about Waters Hall thing. That's where I started doing the research on waters that halt and found out that there's perennial and intermittent waters in New Mexico. And um, I got the Skippy dying in the salt water in Cozumel as my hint for that, for Salt Lake. Uh, take it in the Can-Am down. I mean, say it fast, it sounds like Canyon, kind of. Uh, I think he's, you know, he likes to play with words. I know, Mike, you, we were talking before about butterfly fl flutter by, and mm -hmm. you're saying that's an anagram, but mm -hmm. he didn't necessarily say he's using them as anagrams. He's saying, I that's like true. to bend words. And that's I true. I think he's bending that because it's the contiguous highway. You know, he said the clues are contiguous. Right. And I don't know if that was a kind of clue he was dangling in front of us. Um, so. Um, okay, so here's a couple more. Um, why do you drive then to WWWH? Oh, am I showing the poem or am I? No, on? you're not. Oh, no, um, you're not. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me switch it to the. I thought I was showing the poem. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. So, right here. So, I got halt highlighted and then can am. Take it in the can am down. Not far, too far to walk. Put in below the adobe of brown. Uh, adobes are home. Yeah. Okay. Um, from there, it's no place for the meek. I gave you the definition of meek. 
the omega, the end, is ever drawing nigh, which is near. So the omega is drawing near. That was the omega parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be no paddle up your creek. Creek translates into a hidden trail. So that's the okay. Santa Fe Trail. Just heavy loads, loads. We looked the definition of, of, up of that, and that's carts. So it's the wagon carts. And then water high is the tidewater marker. Uh, if you've been wise and found the, the blaze as the star, look quickly down your quest, which is expedition, which it actually, everything with it translates back to expedition, in my opinion. Um, but uh, Tari Scant with Marvel Gay. So Tari uh, is linger, linger a little with archaic gaze and the archaic is talking about the, um, you know, it's old. Uh, just take the chest and go in peace. So why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? He's saying, so the why is it that I must go at the trail? That's what I took from that. Okay. Uh, there's a why in the trail. And when you look up new research on it, it actually talks about there being a why in the trail that goes to the mountain pass to uh, Cimarron. And I gave you the definition of Cimarron, and, and it matches up <laughs> pretty crazy. And then, uh, so hear me all and listen good. Uh, the listen buttons, your effort will be worth the cold. Leave it as the hospital. You now I could be interpreting that wrong, and it could be the... So your interpretation house. is the riddle. There's uh, The person's asking, saying, no, there's a specific riddle. But your, your, yeah. your interpretation is... You've interpreted each of the, the parts of the clues, right? Well, the first half of the poem brings you to this location. And I think once you get there, so you have to figure out, if he says, uh, if you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But then why does he keep talking after that? And, and it sounds like more clues. So you're, once you get there, you actually find the map. He says, uh, marry, the marry the poem to a good map. The map is there that they provide. It's actually mm. the, the map that I showed you of, of the play. And you could see yeah. the, the rest of the clues there. Um, so yeah, that's it. Okay. So go back out of that. So then we can see each other. Cause I still have questions and people are like, you haven't <laughs> asked mine. I have a list. I'm trying as fast as I can y'all. Um, what is the closest tree to the hospital where you think it is in location and feet? Oh, goodness. I, I have no idea. Ballpark. Is it 50 feet, 100 feet, 1,000 no, feet? No, no. I mean, it's it's on the other side of the blaze. So, I mean, okay. It's, okay. It's, it's hundreds of feet. I mean, easily. Okay. Um, it's far away. Oh, I already I mean, asked not, that one. I just, I don't know what, what was his exact quote on the on the thing? He, did he say he was going to lay his bones down at the tree or over the chest? I thought he said uh, over the chest. Uh, yeah, it's a chest. Too, but I, yeah. I, could be I think he just said he, in he the area, about, I can see he trees. He talks about That's going, all. leaning against a tree and looking at all the wildlife and stuff. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't remember him saying, I'm going to lean against a tree and die and lay my bones over the chest. I'm, I don't remember them being together like that. So um, have you had any interaction with Forrest? Did you email him or have you been to any signings? Talk to him about your solve at all. I sent him the email. Basically, and he, you know, he's not going to respond to it. He, it. I don't think if you got the right solve, he's going to say, hey, you got it. Go get it, buddy. <laughs> you know, um, I did explain um, about the uh, the star and being the blaze and the warm waters and how I got to it. And uh, basically went through, you know, the clues and stuff. And uh, okay. you know, okay. I explained to him how you can't, you can't get there to where I need to go. And I don't know what. I don't know what to do. I said, I don't know if I'm supposed to be a rebel right now and go uh, get it or, or go look or. How many you know. times have you been out there? Just the I once? went three last week, three days in a row. Oh, okay. So, so I, I flew out on um, Thursday. I went Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then flew back. So I, okay, I like. I have a couple more before Mike goes, and Mike, check your text anyway. I've I've texted you something. Um, how have you crafted your solve like an architect? That's what Forrest says. It's like an architect. I liked your blaze because it's like. But the question was for you, not for me to answer for you. Um, how did you craft your solve like an architect? Well, I think when he was be saying he was being an architect, he was he was building this poem with words that you can transfer the meanings of and you, like Creek. When I think of Creek, I don't think of it as being a secret passage or hidden passage. Do you, I mean, I would have never thought that until I looked it up. You know what I mean? 
So Right. And he tells us to. And then th the hardest thing I'm having a hard time with is when I look up stuff, depending on the dictionary, it differs. And then when you get to the fifth or sixth, I feel like it's confirmation bias when there's like these really eclectic things that you really, not a common person would know, but he tells us to do that. Yeah. So then it's not specialized knowledge if he tells us to do that. So it's in a dictionary. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I looked up all the words. I, I mean, I, I took all the nouns and separated them and looked up all the different synonyms, antonyms, everything for them. All, I looked up the definitions, um, and then I started realizing that the words can translate into other things and fit. And like the creek thing st stood out the most, and I was like, wow, I didn't know that a creek could be, uh, you know, like a, what was it, a recessed, hidden type passage like that. And yet, yeah. mm -hmm. and I have pictures of the trail, and I'm like, wow, that's exactly, you know, and there's no paddle up your creek because it's not water. It's a hidden passage. So he uses that word different well i know so, mike's been trying to chime in i still have a whole list so you go ahead the mike. symbolisms with the book are what stuck out the most the the blaze being sorry, the star we're fishing for a star i thought that was that just stood out to me the sundial the shadow um the back where it's the uh mm -hmm. the wagon the three forts and he's the star right there um, so William yeah. asked, have you been boots on the ground for any, any other locations? Like if you had saw, we're going to get mad. That was on my list, but I don't yeah. Know. okay. Yeah. I, I originally started out in West Yellowstone. Um, you know, he's, he really talked about that area a lot in the book and Madison. And I, I really, and even right now saying this solve and I'm pretty confident. I feel confident in this solve. Um, my heart wants it to be at the Madison. It really does because yeah. It's just a beautiful place. I, you know, mm -hmm. I've walked along there. I've been to Baker's Hole. Um, I've been into Yellowstone and went to all the places in there. But I had some uh, solve previously that was the Monopoly solve because in one of the interviews I heard him say, uh, at, when I was a kid, I used to love playing Monopoly. And I'm retired now. At this age, <laughs> all I'm doing is playing Monopoly. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he said it that way, all I'm doing now is playing Monopoly. I started looking at things and I thought where warm waters halt is at the boundary of the Madison. And then I, this is when I first started nine months ago, I looked at the boundary of the Madison, you know, fire hole and all that. And I looked up streets, the boundary street and Madison street is where the dude hotel that he built. And I went, Whoa. And then I, I saw Canyon street right down next to it. And it says, and take it in the Canyon down. And I'm like, okay. Not too far, too far to walk, put in below the home of Brown. And there's a big brown grizzly statue right in the middle of the street. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I ended up, I don't know if you want to hear like that. Just like in the Denver Museum, the front of the Denver Museum. Um, there is an update, and many people probably don't know this, and it'll probably come out in an audio later, um, that he's changed that quote. He updated it to say, I don't play Monopoly I play Chase Offaly. <laughs> nice. Ooh, See what I did there? Nice. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so I'm just having fun, guys. I'll give you my thoughts on the solve. I like wait, it. No, wait. We still what? have a bunch of questions. Well, they can wait. <laughs> they can wait till I'm done. Um, I like to solve. Hey, it's, tear me up, Mike. Tear me well, up. Well, I like the general solve. I like how you use some of the landmarks. Um, the War Warm Waters Halt kind of fits. I didn't know that about salt. So, okay. You know, it's like, oh, wow. I learned something new. Um, I don't like the can-am. I don't like the word play in the poem. And it's not just you. I know a lot of people have said, you know, too far to walk is the number 242 because there's like a Route 242 up by Yellowstone or something. Or why is I, why, if you've been wise or why must I go is wise. Like you said, a why. I just don't like word play because it's too subjective in my well, let's, opinion. Well, let's go back to the can-am. So you don't, yeah. do you think it's just a coincidence that it's the contiguous highway and he said contiguous? Yes, <laughs> yeah I, that's a hard yeah. one to walk away that's a i've had ones like that just like the <laughs> don't touch or do do not touch and i found the museum right. i'm like this cannot be a coincidence i that when one I, the contiguous highway that was one that when be hard i found to walk away. contiguous found out can am was part of the pan american highway and it was con called the contiguous highway right i about jumped out of my chair <laughs> and went oh my god are you serious and uh that you know, I was like, oh, my goodness, he's sprinkling the clue right in front of us in interviews, and we don't even know it. I take the poem I as literal. 
It's literal. I don't. I'm not trying to look at like hidden says, messages or wordplay. Yeah, well, I just take it as literal. The canyon is an actual canyon. Maybe it's named canyon on a map. Maybe there's a river, and you say, oh, that's a canyon, you know, the, like well, Madison Junction. I think Junction. everybody on the imagination scale is zero to 100. Yeah. Right. I put right. Davio 99, and I put Mike as one. Yeah, <laughs> right. And neither Davio, are wrong. Davio, I mean, he is very knowledgeable. When you guys had him on, I the stuff that he can relate, and a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's just crazy. But no, I found it very interesting. I mean, he can pull songs and Mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff that relate. Yeah, I do not believe synonyms, imaginative and crazy, are similar. And some people have said, like, oh, if you're imaginative, you're just reaching and you're just crazy. No, I think imagination with knowledge together, but there's just some people that are more literal. And again, it's really interesting because I think I'm like maybe 50-50. And so so talking with Mike and talking with Davio... They're both, I've talked to both of them in length about this. It is very interesting to see the polar opposites. And I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle, personally. You know what like, I like most about Davia? Yeah. His his energy level. Oh, oh yeah. My God. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I just get a little bit, Davia, right. please? Can I have some energy? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. My, fav- my favorite thing is the love and kindness. Because if you have a lot of energy and you're mean, that's one thing. But if you have yeah. a lot of energy and you're like, peace, love, peace, yeah. peace. He I seems mean, like a really nice guy. So back okay. to the solve. There's yeah, two I have other a things. More questions after Mike d- is because Mike's Go for it. There's Go two ahead. other things that kill it for me. I I think the blaze literally is when you find the blaze, look quickly down and it's right there. So I don't think the blaze is a big, not yours in particular. I'm saying I don't think the blaze is something big that you can find on Google Maps or from an airplane. I think he's marked something or something was already there that physically is. Mm-hmm. Oh, look there, look right down, and there's the chest. So I don't agree with blazes being this huge you know, yeah. uh, thing. I just tied it in with the symbolisms and, and hey, I, you get know, it. I, I could be wrong. I mean, I don't right. know, but, um, I thought it was neat that he's telling us to fish for a star and I found a star and that's my blaze. So. Right, right, right. I get you. I got you. Um, and then the I, other I thing is the point though. It's, it's yeah. a big blaze, you know? Right, right. And that you're not the only are... one. A lot of people have used big Google earth blazes and I just don't agree with them. I take the poem as literal when it says, when you find the blaze, blaze look quickly down and there it is. Mm-hmm. Take it and get out of there. The other thing yeah. is the, um, the man-made structure because somebody in the chat said that he did clarify and said the treasure is not in or around a man-made structure. And he did say that. I don't have the quote exactly where it is. So to me, the, 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 the hospital would be a man-made structure. So but those two things. that's going outside the poem, and you only want to focus on the poem, and that would mean we don't need to worry about I, that. That's just Fenny being Fenny. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. focus on the 85% of the story correct. So I focus on the poem for the clues to find out where to go, but I'm still going to take everything he said over the last 10 years because he said it. It came out of the guy's mm-hmm. mouth that actually created this thing. But how many contradictions does he have? Okay. There are some. I, I that's wanna, true. I want to say a couple true. things. I'll yeah. give my opinions and then we'll go because I guess that's the way we do it. Um, is Forrest has said there's a billion blazes. I can mm-hmm. see your blaze. It's pretty unique. I had Tough Cliff as one of mine and I really analyzed it and said there's not a billion of these. There's one. Um, and the the biggest one for me is I feel, and it might be too much of a feeling, and I might be wrong, I feel like Forrest is overlooking Ojo Caliente with the water, and there's trees everywhere, and right. there's geysers going off, and there's a water. It's for, uh, Forrest. Uh, Toby has said this. It's finny. Mm-hmm. This seems, or and I don't know this area well enough, it doesn't seem at that immediate spot that he's taking his sandwich, and he's like, I'm getting ready to die, y'all. And where this was, is the spot because I where, love this spot. I took it as this uh, being something like this because what was his favorite thing to do? It was, he was he said excavating. I mean that right. was his favorite thing to do. And um, I think his favorite thing to do is is fishing. I do. Well, he said somewhere in one of the books, and I wish I had it. I thought he said that I'd something about I'd rather sit here and do this than anything else. I thought. I don't remember something along those lines. And, but, um, and then the quotes about him saying about the excavating and they're trying to preserve history and he's really against it, stuff like that. So, well, um, the other there thing are is a few that are <clears throat> questioning whether your spot is in the Rockies. So that's something well, to look yeah, at for it's that, part of the Rockies. but yeah, for that, the very end of the Rockies for that, I'll just say this Forrest. There was another location somewhere where somebody said, that's not part of the Rocky mountains and Forrest's answer was, but it's in the highlighted area of the map. If it's oh. in the highlighted area of the okay. map, it's in play. 
That's okay. what I remember an answer he gave. It's, Somebody it's can correct It's part of the me. San De Cristo, I think they're called mountains. Yeah. It's right at the edge of them, and that's part of the Rocky Mountains. So. But I'll okay, tell so you probably the biggest thing, the biggest reason why I don't like the final location is originally he was going to go die there, and that's the same location as where the treasure chest is now. And if he mm-hmm. would have went there, I mean, there were cars parked there for the people that work, whether they're park rangers or they're excavating or whatever they're doing, and he's saying 900 mm-hmm. years Somebody would have found it relatively quickly, I think. So that's why I don't think. Well, it's the and right that's one. a comment from Chad. Yeah, his this area is an isolated area. There was another one of wouldn't the body Very smell isolated. pretty quick, and it would. Well, so don't you think if his body was at that location, wouldn't it wouldn't it be found pretty quickly? I think the animals would get him within a day. Okay. I mean, there's coyotes. Um, I don't remember if they told me there was wolves. I, right. I know there's coyotes. I don't think there's wolves. It, Coyotes, foxes. Um, oh, there's mountain lions that come through there too. The guy said they have mountain lions pass through there um, a few times throughout the year. Um, so, and, and when you, there, the rangers are in the like right when I was there the last couple of days, there was the one ranger there. Nobody there. I was the only person there. Mm-hmm. I had the whole fort to myself, and I could walk all the way out to the very far end, and they can't even see you from there. All the adobes and you stuff in the way. Wait, you'd have to wait for that to happen to get in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I'm not encouraging that. I didn't uh, yeah, encourage <laughs> anybody to do to go to the hospital yeah. right. and tear it up either. So right, right. Okay, and you need to say, that. hi, Dad. Dad was in the room a little while ago. Yeah. So, I know, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now, if anybody so, wants to contact you, do you want to give out an email if anybody wants to talk to you about yeah, this? Yeah, that's fine. So, it's give me title to to the gold at gmail.com. Give me title to the gold at gmail.com. Okay, good. Yep. Go ahead, Capro. Okay, a um, couple more questions, and then I have one. Um, someone said, I don't agree with this, but someone asked, don't you think this has too much specialized knowledge in the solve for the average redneck? I don't know. I mean, he, he deliberately told us to look at the, the nouns are important, and I looked at all the nouns, and... Right. And I started. Yeah, I don't uh, think there's any pound footage or advanced codes yeah, or any it's of the not, stuff Mike does. I don't. I did, <laughs> the, I, I did the poem. I stopped looking at maps and I concentrated on what he said to do. And I looked at the poem and dissected it. And once I started figuring out other words and stuff, that's when I was like, well, what am I looking? What are the, all these words describing here? And then that's when I started looking at the map and uh, the research I did on warm waters. And, you know, salt water being the clue, because that really stuck out about Skippy to me, dying in the salt water uh, diving. And uh, that's when I found the two salt water lakes and this one right there at um, Wagon Mound. So I so will the say. The last one is what okay. is your next step? What is your, are you quitting the chase? This is over, quitting the chase, finding a new solve, wanting to chat with people about this solve. Um, I'm, I'm willing to chat with anybody about it. I mean, I'll give them more info if they want, you know. Yeah. You want me to send them some more pictures? I'm going to do that too. Um, well, I'll say, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I don't, I don't have, uh, I don't have a desire to go back there and do risk getting in trouble. Right. Um, I know he says, you know, leave someone in the car, leave the car running and you need a flashlight. Um, <laughs> this place is very isolated, but there is one issue <clears throat> is right there to the right of the gate. I do have pictures of it, but I, don't, I won't show them. Um, there are a couple houses right there that are just over a little hill next to the gate you go in Mm -hmm. because they close the gate at 4 p.m. every night. And a couple of the rangers are allowed to live there. Oh, okay. This is so isolated that if they see uh, headlights coming up at night and they happen to be looking out the window, they're going to be like, who's this? Why is this person driving way out here? Now, don't get me wrong. Right to the left of Wolf Creek is the private land, and it's called Fort Union Ranch, and there are people that have a house right there that live on yeah. it. Um, so maybe they won't think that. I, I don't know. But my first thought was someone if you do this, someone would have to drop you off at the gate, leave so they don't get suspicious, and you walk up with a flashlight you know, and go retrieve the treasure. So I'm going to ask a quick two questions, and then I have to step out for about two minutes, and Mike needs to take over, and then I'll be back. Um, why did you delete your videos and why are you sharing this solve and <laughs> yeah. just not holding on to the millions? Cause if this is the, the solve you think is right. So those are two different questions for you and I will be right back. Friends. Okay. Okay. So, um, I mean this, I, I don't plan on going back out again. Um, I'm not in a position financially and actually, uh, 
uh, thanks, Dad. Uh, Dad and Chad <laughs> actually has been <laughs> been the uh, person taking care of all this. I actually, April of last year, I had um, fusion surgery on my neck. And oh, uh, this okay. is, I had fusion surgery previously on my uh, lower back. And uh, I haven't worked since April of last year. So, so you've had I'm time to disability, research. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, I'm not in a position financially to, to keep going out there. Florida's a long way from those four states. And uh, that's where you're at, Florida. Was, yeah. If it wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't even have done boots on the ground the, the two times in Montana yeah. and then in New Mexico. So I, I can't afford to do that. I'm in school right now, too, full time student. Um, I kind of flew out there after classes and got back real quick so I could do my homework. And so I'm the, trying to, uh, the videos you took down off of YouTube, were they about this solve or were they, were they about a different No, they solve? were about the, uh, Monopoly West Yellowstone, West Yellowstone. street Yellowstone. solve okay. that I had that, gotcha. you know, I had a couple things I never did finish where that, that solve actually out there kind of took me to a couple different possibilities. Mm -hmm. The one being the 1500 acres that burned, along Hebgen Lake, they are in the shape of an arrowhead right across from gotcha. Baker's Hole. Did but you post this on a forum? Because I remember reading about that solve. You posted this somewhere or no? The yeah, whole, I made videos yeah, on the it. The whole Monopoly I mean, thing? Yeah, I remember well, reading about it. Well, I made it up to the blaze, and I never did. And there was actually a couple of possibilities of blazes because in West Yellowstone, and I'll go ahead and tell you, there was a, a fire that took out a lot of the buildings in um, 1940. I want to say it was 41 or 42. And then right. And they're all the buildings back then were made of lodgepole pines. And one of the things I connected with um, the fire was in 43, I believe it was, was it 43 or 46? He went and cut down lodgepole pines. And I thought maybe it's a possibility that the story there is, is he helped rebuild the, you know, cut down the trees and rebuild stuff in West Yellowstone after that blaze took out all those buildings on the, the main street there. Um, but that was one of the possibilities. I kept going back to that home of Brown, which was the bear statue. And it was, you know, it was uh, looking a specific direction towards the fly water shop. And that was my Marvel gaze. Um, but I had a, you know, a few different routes. So that's why, you know, you know, I didn't think that it, there was too many possibilities there. And I don't think he would have left it as, so many possibilities. I think he would have been more specific. It's going to be this route. Yeah. You're following it. You're not going to have three turns you could go. Well, I'll say this about your solve that you were nice enough to share with all of us today is it's not crazy. Me and K-Pro get solves emails where we just read it and go, yeah, that's crazy. Your solve has landmarks. You're using a sundial. You're using a plaque. You know what I mean? You have a where world waters halt that is a water. Symbolism. Exactly. Yeah, so it's not crazy. I just happen to believe it's not correct because it contradicts some of the things that Forrest yeah. has said. But you're using the clues in the poem. I mean, you're actually got to a location. So it, it, it makes that kind of sense. I, and there's you know, a thousand solutions like that out there. Nobody's found the right one yet to find it. I'm going to frame it a little differently. There, we hear a lot of solves. I probably hear between five and 10 a week. And I will say the solves, there is something so significantly against what Forrest has said. Like, I do believe you have a man-made structure, but, or a couple little things right. where it's like, oh, but that might be what it takes is something a little bit different or different interpretation. But if you're searching outside the four search states, even though the poem doesn't say it and you're a poem purist, that to me, I, we can say crazy. It's just so far outside of, I wouldn't go search in Oklahoma. Like, sure. I'm just not going to spend my time. I've had three or four solves outside of the four search states or outside of the Rockies or near Forest Home or this or that. And it's like, I won't say crazy, but I'll say 7%. <laughs> let's just say um so i don't want to judge anybody else but i do want to say um this one i do think and it had a lot of depth to it i can see why you were excited about some things again there's some pieces that i was like yeah. i wouldn't jump on a plane and go to try to find it but if i was in that area i'd be going and just stopping by to say hi but it helps yeah. to hear other people's thought process in my opinion i mean i i like searchers that come on that want to say i think the poem means this canyon down could be can am highway it's contiguous yeah. things like yeah. that um, we got yeah, a super... He doesn't want us to forget about history, and you know that's when he talks about tripping over the French soldiers' uh, grave. Right. Um, you know this is uh, where the Civil War was. You know, mm -hmm. um, so he doesn't want us to forget history, and that's another reason why I thought this could possibly be it. 
And I didn't know about the salt water thing. So that's interesting. I think I'm going to read up on that for possible warm waters. But we got a super yeah. chat from 3D Bronze. We know our buddy 3D Bronze. Sorry I'm late. Not hating. Just saying this is what Forrest said. Yes, D. The, the guy that asked him a question was D. It means the treasure is not hidden in or about a structure. Google structure for more information. So he was just pointing out that Forrest did clarify a little bit. So. Quick, somebody Google structure. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, and we have got, we said we were going to hold solid to the 45 minute mark, and it's been an hour yeah, and a half. It goes quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, right. it does. No, that's, no, all that's right. okay. But we need to announce because there's been questions about World Series of Fen. So this is where we're going to transition. I do want to say you had 358 people in the room when it top chatted. Um, so it was quite a, and even when I said, no, everyone, he does not actually have the chest. It maintained and actually went up uh, after that. Um, and I don't think we really said, I, I'm sure we'll get a few pieces of mail of, oh, you tried to say he had the chest. I don't think we no, advertised it's a it searcher that, that wants to share a solution. I mean, that's all. So before we transition, one, I want to say thanks, Phil, for coming on. Yes. But I also want to hey, say thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. I also want to say thank you to Renee. Renee is a uh, searcher. I guess I'll share my screen. She's a searcher that was out here in Vegas. And here's our picture together right here. Uh, she was nice enough to treat me to lunch over at the Aria. And uh, I talked to Renee for about an hour and a half, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, I hope she's going to show up to the World Series of Fen with her son. Awesome. We talked about that as a possibility. World Series of Fen is only two weeks away, two weeks from Saturday. So thank oh. you, Renee. It was great meeting you. And actually, Renee texted me today and said, if Forrest does watch your videos, I have a question for him. So I'm going to read this exactly as she typed it. And Forrest, this is for you. I don't know how you would answer, but put it in a scrapbook. I don't know. Um it says, what does it say? Okay. It says, Forrest, did you get the answers to your encounter in the 300-foot clearing in Laos, December 22, 1968? That's the question. Forrest, did you get the answers to your encounter in the 300-foot clearing in Laos, December 22, 1968? All right. So there it is. And thanks again for lunch, Renee. It was nice meeting you. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and transition. And it was nice Gabriel. chatting with you, Renee. I want you to know she wanted to make sure it was cool that they went out yeah. to lunch. I'm like, oh, of course. But right. Renee's just nice people and wanted to make sure everything was good. And we've had Renee in the room. And I am confident an hour and a half in for it. Well, let's send him the minute mark so he knows he got a question from Renee. And I emailed Forrest a link to the show. So I'm assuming he's watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, um, Forrest. You're right. I think he's interested in people's solutions, right or wrong. I think he wants to know the thought process of searchers. Oh, there's right. In my opinion. I actually emailed him while I was in Santa Fe and asked if he'd like to go to lunch and I'd buy him a uh, tea or you know, lunch if he yeah. either one at uh Collected Bookworks. I actually went to Collected Bookworks. Oh, and cool. Walked around, took some pictures. I looked at his other books and Right. Um, so yeah, grabbed a cup nice. of coffee while I was there. That's cool. Okay, so thank you for coming on. And some people have asked, how do I get on the show? You email Mike. This is, my, I do marathons. Mike does. And if you get through Mike, then that means, you know, there's, there's something you're, I'm not going to say you're not crazy because that's not nice. That's not a nice way to say it. You have a, a solve that we would like to, we talked a lot with Phil and we wanted to make sure that we didn't have, somebody said in the, in the chat, this is more than the the guy that cut the strings. At yeah. least and a lot of people have said <laughs> yeah. great presentation and you shared a lot. Right. It's, that's yeah. what we're going to require. You can't come in. Now, here's a question for you, Phil. Before you would tell us, and we kind of really got into depth, you wouldn't even tell us a search state because you thought that, you thought something, there was some reason. This fascinates me. Can you tell me why? I, I, no, I do I not tell you. What yeah, state? you wouldn't tell me which state until we kind of had a whole. We agreement. talked. Oh, I, no, I did tell you New Mexico. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. I thought you didn't. And that fascinates me. So the next person that does. Yeah, okay. I I, I've told people in your, yeah. your chat and other people's chat, it's in New Mexico. I, so. And okay. just thinking about uh, what you said, K-Pro, your solution is good because it's logical. We don't agree with your interpretation yes. of the clues, yeah. but it's logical, and that's what right. makes it a good solve. You yeah. know, and, I, and I think, you know, people share, whether they're right or not, they don't know if they're right exactly. until they go retrieve the treasure. Right. And, you know, between my West Yellowstone solve and this, I just want to show how you, you got to use your imagination, like he says, but you really need to stop looking at maps is what I'm going to tell everybody. Dive into that poem. Dissect that poem, all the nouns, verbs, everything. Go through everything and um, just start looking at what definitions mean and 
uh, synonyms, antonyms, look at everything. And, and you can come up with some really interesting things. And next yeah, week you- is going to be poem week, everybody. Next week, I'm pretty sure it's going to take both shows. We're going to talk all about the poem. K Pro is going to love it. Uh, well, all about the poem, gonna, the we're clues. We're going to talk about the poem in light of a lot of the new information yeah. that is out. I love yeah. the poem. I'm just sick of what's your WWWH? And we sit around for right, two right, hours right. and everyone says either it's a warm water spring or I can't tell you or, or whatever. That's yeah. Now I'll tell you this. I did other things too. I put the poem in Excel to where each letter was in a box. Oh, I've been um, there. <laughs> and I'll explain too. I, I did this a long time ago, but then I saw someone else do it. Um, name on here. World famous gamer. Yeah. World famous did. gamer. Yep. He's in the chat. Um, he, uh, he had done it too. I didn't get anywhere with it. And then I started seeing his, I, I found I could spell out fire hole and some mm-hmm. other things. I mm-hmm. was shifting the sentences side to side, right? You try the wheel, all the different yep. nouns and I could spell things out. Right. I mean, it's crazy. All this, all the different things you could spell out. I did fire hole. Um, gosh, I don't remember all the words, but, uh, didn't you get try the wheel or yeah, something try the wheel? It? And it yeah. wasn't me. I was just sharing it that somebody else came up with it. Yeah. You, you could spell waters or right. water. And if it spelled uh, hospital, you would never leave your spot. Oh my ever. goodness. Ah. <laughs> I'd be like, dad, fly me back out of here again. <laughs> well, yeah. well, dad, I think Phil needs to go to the world series of Fen, but I'll leave you that between oh, you two goodness. guys. I think both you of know, you should come out to the I world just, series. of Fen. I just found out, you know, I'm waiting on disability and the government's not doing very good for ah, okay. it. Okay. But uh, I just found out I need to have another fusion surgery done. Oh, so no. Okay. I've been getting injections in my neck, and they're, okay. know, they're not really helping. So so you're going to have even more time to go over the poem and go through the books no, and everything I else. Well, I think next time I do anything, it's, it's going to be, you know, after I get my degree, and uh, yeah. I'm trying to get into finance now. And uh, gotcha. my neurosurgeon told me to pick a, a new career because <sighs> I need a sedentary uh, job. So I think next time I do do anything, it's it's probably not going to be pen related, uh, treasure related. But I do want to go back to the Madison River and go fly fishing, and then yeah. uh, Hebgen Lake. Oh goodness, that's a whole other story. Yeah. When and I like the Heg- Hegman Lake area. We, but... we got stuck in a lightning and oh, heavy no. downpour, renting a boat halfway <laughs> across the lake, and had to pull off, and they had to come rescue us. Oh wow, that's, that's a whole other story. It was horrible i fell down hurt my neck uh but that was a uh beautiful spot and i will tell you when you're going across the lake on a little boat the trout are just coming up to the top of the water and getting bugs off the top of the water is that right and it looks like an awesome place to fish and i'm a big fisherman i'd love to go back and just go fishing so world famous gamers got a question uh what's your youtube channel and is it still up i know you had one is it still there I did delete it not okay. long ago, but I just went ahead and reactivated. I don't have any videos back up. I deleted all those old ones because, you know, I kind of felt they were irrelevant at the time. Um, and, you know, you got a lot of people that tear you up. And so I just was like, you know what, I'll just <laughs> delete them. So in the future, if you get frustrated and need a little time, send them all to private. So then if yeah. you transit, you always have They're the option if you ever want to come back rather than deleted. So I know there's quite a few or a couple of people that do that and they come back every, all of them disappear. And then magically they come back every year. They kind of get, I, I, that's their cycle. I actually had a lot of emails from people that said, man, that's a great solve. Um, you know, with the monopoly solve, they loved it. Um, I had a couple people that, you know, I don't know who they were. They used emails that you couldn't email back to the server wouldn't allow you to email back, but they were pretty nasty, <laughs> but I did yeah. get a lot of people that, that said that was a great solve. And you know, that's what I'm saying. I love to show different ways of looking at things and using your imagination. That's yeah. what I hope this solve shows. And if anybody wants to contact you again, it's give me title to the gold at gmail.com. Right. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. It was fun. It's always good to go through the thought process on the poem. And now, K-Pro, transition, and what do we got to talk yes, about? Yes, so we need to talk about World Series of Fen. Two weeks I'm from sorry, Saturday. For Redneck Express. World Series of <laughs> Fen! Um, it is coming up. It is February 14, 15. Um, Mike, do you want to share your screen and bring up the... Oh, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Um, so... If you've decided that you like Searcher Talk and it's more than just a chat room that you need, we want to invite you to a Vegas. So um, Friday the 14th, we are going to be doing a Fremont Street Exploring. 
Um, then we are going to, on Saturday, have a lunch at the Bally's Food Court. Lots of different varieties of food there. It's We're like, going to do an escape. Yeah. It's like Subway, you know what I mean? Pizza place, that type thing. Hamburgers, There's a burger food place. court. There's yeah. A, like, yeah. Expensive, uh, but not terribly expensive compared to some of the other Oh, places. I like the Omegas on the card. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's awesome. Um, the Escapeology is actually at three, so we're going to have to leave it around two. Um, and then World Series of Fan is at seven o'clock. We actually, have... we're going to have to leave at one thirty from the food court, but yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. One thirty yeah. from mm. the food court. Um, and then those that that don't know, um, what we do is Bally's has the tournament. So the buy-in that you give is to them. We don't get, we don't even need to know your name. Um, just show up around six six thirty um, to the poker room, and you buy in. And it's not a private tournament, but they don't advertise it anywhere else. So it's all of us last year. It was all of us and nobody else bought in. They have a legal right to buy in, um, quite honestly. So, um, but what we do is we'll have a bunch of other prizes there. So once they actually pay off um, the people that are in the tournament, we will have a set of prizes that we will give in order. And what we think we're going to do is like last year, we have nine prizes. So First place gets to go over and pick their pick of the litter. And then number two gets to pick theirs. Number three gets to pick theirs. And it goes um, until all the prizes are out there. So some examples of the prizes. Um, chase, um, there might be a Chaseopoly there. There might be a TTOTC <laughs> there. There might be uh, a numbered, maybe. Maybe um, a numbered coin. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, we have lots of other searchers that are interested in um, giving us some stuff to put in. Um, yeah. Toby has said he's going to put in. A few other people have as well. Um, but you can see we already have a bracelet of the WSOF 2020. 3D Bronze yeah, that's has awesome. some. Huh? I said, yeah, that's awesome. The bracelet and then the bronze chest, uh, yeah. which we don't have yet, 3D Bronze, but I know you're going to send it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's some potential other prizes. I will say we haven't added it. Um, but cause it was kind of after deadline, but, mm -hmm. um, Copper Dan just came up with a, a piece of art he is bringing. Um, so there's just a whole variety and there's probably four or five people, um, who have also said that they're going to add to the prize pool. So we kind of just put that question mark. Um, what are your thoughts on what day I should grab the tickets for Sunday night is what I would suggest Zar. Um, Zara is talking oh, about yeah. thinking about putting in um, two tickets for a show. Right. Um, and I think it should be Sunday night, Saturday night. Yeah. It's um, it goes, the tournament goes late. Um, it usually goes, it breaks out well, around 11 and the party doesn't usually stop <laughs> after the card. What he's <laughs> saying is he thought he would give the tickets for Saturday night for those people who don't play in the tournament. But if you're not playing in the tournament, you should be there watching because as soon as we get knocked out, we're all going to be there talking and having fun. So I would say Sunday at 9 p.m. <laughs> Uh, czar, but it's up to you. You're getting the tickets. If you, and yeah. of course, it could be sold out. So if you have to get them for Saturday, that's fine. Somebody will use them. Oh, did you see 3D Bronze's super chat? Oh, nice. Thank you for the super chat. We appreciate it. Uh, he said, almost, almost done. done yeah. Not shipping your average 3D chest. That's dun, awesome. Dun, dun. Uh, it's going to be pretty oh, cool. So, uh, so, so we're going to yeah. have lots of prizes. We're trying to figure out how to divide them up between the escape room. Um, the poker tournament, and then we do have a little something for everybody. So you need to RSVP. Um, hopefully we'll have programs, all of that available. But make sure you RSVP just so we have an average number. Right now, we're a little bit over 40 uh, for the poker tournament. And we have a few people that are, have already told me they're going to be at the rail. And, yes, I will have one for you, a little um, some gifts or a gift. Um, and then we have about 18 or 19 at the escape room. The escape room's a bigger deal. Um, well, RSVP for both, but the room's max at eight. So we're right at the point of now, I think we're going to need to get a third room and all of that and what that means. So, and then here's the other thing. Make sure if you're coming, you email KPRO because like Friday night at Fremont Street, well, where are we going to meet? We would like to be, have a group email that we could send it out. We're not going to share your email address with anybody. But in other yeah. words, we want to do final de final plans, final yeah. details on these things. And if we had your email, then we could let you know. The other place yeah. would be Forest Fens Grand Adventure on Facebook. I'll be posting updates on what we're doing in the Grand Adventure. That would be a good place to check that Friday yeah. and that Saturday on what's going on. I'll be like, hey, me and Kate are in the poker room. You know, come on and say yeah. hi, all that kind of stuff. So. 
Well, and key, keyword says, where's a good place to buy a disguise? It is actually pretty <laughs> funny that some people won't say a name. They'll just sit in the back and they'll just observe. Some people That's are a little okay. bit more social and yeah. talk to everybody. And some people talk about their saws. Some people don't talk about anything. Some people want scuttlebutt of, did Toby find it? And <laughs> like, this was when Toby bought a place last year. And so if you want, I mean, they're... Mike and I will be there, but also yeah, some a lot people of you know, Cynthia, Toby, people splinter off. Right. Um, so there's going to be 40 people. Copper so Dan, be... Malika. I mean, there's people yeah. from that we met at Function are going to be there. People we've met in Santa Fe are going to be there, you know. I would yeah. love to come to this, but, you know, financially I won't be able to this yeah. year, but if I'm better off next year, I definitely want to come and play yeah. Texas Hold'em. It. It's, it's a lot of fun. Texas Hold'em. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and of course, Mike has put a bounty on me. I was so. just going to mention that, everybody. You won't know what it is until right before the tournament. So you got to be there to bucks. find out what it is. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, One million dollars. <laughs> so, You're right. Um, um, but I will say that, um, well, maybe maybe we'll put a bounty on somebody. And when you knock them out, Forrest will knock, take down a search tape. <gasps> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Good luck with that, that one. Yeah. Um, um, so those of you that don't know what a bounty is, that means when you knock me out of the tournament, you get an extra something. So, when so in other words, whoever knocks K pro out, you come see me and I give you something and I'll announce to everybody what that something is before the tournament. The other thing, just so you guys know, it's $65 for the tournament, but if you get knocked out, what if I get knocked out in the first 20 minutes? So you can rebuy if you want to, you don't have to, right. you can rebuy as many times as you want to for like the first two hours. I know I'm winning. So I know I'm going to rebuy eight times if I have to, yeah, and that money goes seven. to the prize pool. It's paid out most of it they keep a little bit of it what's that uh box town saying what time is the game i think he means 7 p.m is 7 the poke you need to get down there at six if we have a whole bunch of people show up who have not told us they were showing up we only have so many tables reserved so you want to get in buy in uh, to make sure you know you're not on a waiting list there will if we fill up there will be a waiting list which means when somebody yeah. gets knocked out the person on the waiting list gets to sit by gets to sit down and play but I don't think we'll have fun. that problem. People should be able to yeah. come right back in. So if we have a good estimate, I think last year we had an estimate of 30 and 34 showed up, um, which See, is I okay. It was, I but, thought we had 54. And, Why am I thinking? No, no, we had 34 buy into the tournament, but we had 54, I think, total buy-ins or 54 total See? people or something. Oh, okay. I haven't written I thought down it was somewhere. more, but okay. But 34 was the initial buy-in. All right. Um, so, but we have, we already have more. We have 40 people and most people are buying uh, and I will say I apologize. We didn't realize how expensive tickets were going to be. It's for me too. I'm coming cross country. I had to change it because of my work event. Um, we're going to be sensitive to that next year. So yeah, a few of you aren't it'll be, be Pro Bowl weekend. Last year it would have been this past weekend is when we did the World Series event last year. We'll try and move right. it back to that weekend for last year. Yeah. The weekend yeah. before the Super Bowl, things are kind of slow in Vegas. It's the weekend this weekend that gets crazy. So, okay, yeah. Super Bowl. Who's going to win, K Pro? Kansas City mm -hmm. or San Francisco? Let's hear it. Um, I'm, I'm taking Kansas city cause I'm more of a Kansas farm girl than I am. <laughs> I've lived in both cities. I, and I'm a little bit more, a little bit more country than I am <laughs> rock and roll. Um, so I'm a little bit more Kansas city. I've been going back and forth. I actually, when I sat with the auditors, one was someone I knew from, <laughs> from Kansas. And one of them was someone I knew from California up San Francisco. And they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, Ooh, this is tough. I don't want to make anybody mad, but I think we should go Kansas City because what's the what's the no the point difference is a point and a half. It's a really close Super Bowl. What do you think, Phil? Kansas City or San Francisco? Forty nine. No, both both the teams are really good, uh, but I think Mahomes. Right. I mean, Kansas City looks so good. Mahomes <laughs> reminds me of Brady, his younger years. Right. I mean, he just <clears throat> he makes things happen, and uh, I really think Kansas City is going to pull it off. All right. I'm undecided. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win, oh, which is probably I'm why I won't decide. bet who's going to win. two red teams. I mean, what do yeah. I do? It's <laughs> going to be red. red. So you need to tell me because D-Pro and I, and that's the other thing I will say. Some people have asked me. We got another gift. Thank you. Um, I have finally figured out my, my computer exploded, um, and I got it all put back together, but I couldn't figure out how to go non-live. I think I figured it out. D-Pro is dying because I have not let him open the presents. <laughs> so I have those presents ready for him. A new one is at the UPS store, so we will be doing another one. Um, okay, shout out to Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, and I can't believe he lost his daughter as well, or they, they both passed. Yes, that's... I'm not even a sports fan, and yeah, everybody was messaging me, and it's tragic and terrible, and ugh. Um, 
So I won't say I'm really either side though, Mike, you put me on, on <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not like, going to bet it. Cause I don't know who's going to win. If I don't have some kind no. of an edge or I'm not betting it, I might bet Mike, the under or over, but I'm not betting Mike. who's going to win. What? Okay. Well, I'll bet the it only, for you. I'll do a bet whatever you want. The only thing I ask is to bet an actual team rather right. than over under or the coin flip. All or the right. This or then that. I'll put something on Kansas City for you. <laughs> oh wow! I walked right into that uh, one. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So Monday we're going to talk about the poem. Yeah, it's going to uh, be the poem ten years later. Does do in in my opinion, what I want to talk about is. All the info that we have from Forrest for the last 10 years, this year is a 10-year anniversary, does it make you look at the poem differently or not? Does it make you look at the clues, interpret them in a certain way? That's what I want to talk about. Oh, and some of you might want to know what Pro is going to talk about. I'm not sure if you guys know. Um, Randy's in the room. I don't know what his actual what's his actual channel anyway put it in in chat randy randy what? did a hey i'm calling you out k pro oh yeah i'll link um, to that video, video. <laughs> yeah, he and did. he's saying he is a poem purist i say a poem purist does not exist he called me out i called him out and guess who's gonna be the tiebreaker d pro that's right thinks. and how old's d pro for anybody who doesn't know d pro is 10 years old All he's right. a treasure hunter he has found treasure. All he does is treasure hunting stuff and dinosaurs. So as much fun as Randy had, Randy did a very respectful, fun, good peeps kind of person. <laughs> but we got a rivalry going uh, because you are something that does not exist. Poem purist cannot exist in this treasure hunt. Uh, it depends how you define it. Like, I think I'm more okay. of a poem purist, but I'm going to listen to the things Forrest has said. So I think that's not a poem purist. All right. So, and, and Randy, if you want to do the first Battle of the Titans, I would love you to come on the show. Uh -oh, Mike can moderate. A challenge. Boom. There you go. Point, counterpoint. Uh, Laura with the super chat. Kobe and Gigi. Yeah, that was a rough thing uh, for the yeah. Kobe. So thank you for the super chat. That was a rough yeah. situation. Um, okay, anything else? Are we good? Then Kyle Sandow point, not Kyle Sandow points out. There's 242 people in the room. Too far to walk. 242. Synchronicities. <laughs> those weird synchronicities. Okay. Yeah, but Symbolism. you know what's interesting? Symbolism. Yeah. You know what's interesting Sibilance. is, Sibilance. do you remember, Mike, when we passed 100? That was a big day. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then when we passed 200, that was a big day. Then when we passed 300, that was a big day. Now we've passed 350. We've never gotten to 400, I don't think. Right. Oh, we have. We we got to 550 when the guy was on that said, cut the strings on your book. Oh, that's Because true. everybody that's... assumed he said he was a lead searcher. I think they thought we were saying he's a lead searcher. So yeah. that yeah, was the okay. one time. But, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. It just but talks. 350, that shows that I think we're on an incline. Um, mm -hmm. We are seeing an incline. I'm seeing quite a few. Uh, and we're going into search season very, very soon. We're rolling into <laughs> February. I mean, it's going to be here. The only bad part is I still think we're all, this week I've seen more grumpy grumps um, than in a while because this is when we're all usually gearing up for Feb 4 and Forrest did it early and it's messed us all up. It's nah. like traveling and time zone changes. It messes up our schedules. And so we need another Feb 4 for us. No offense. Um, can you answer the question? Do you need to break a law to get the treasure chest to retrieve the treasure chest? There I think go. Forrest should give us something to read to everybody at the world series of fan. That would be great if he'd answer that question. And he then we put it in a video that. so that everybody in the world knows about no, it. No, because every time he does a function or every time <clears throat> there's a Raleigh meetup or a Detroit meetup or a Denver meetup right. or anywhere else, there's going to be, I, I, it would be great if he did. There's no way he's going to, he would have to put out that every single time. What do you mean? Every well, single it, time. Go ahead, Phil. I was going to say, I'm going to email him right now. Too. <laughs> Go ahead. I think we need to figure out too, uh, specifically law. If he if he does say yes, I don't think he's going to answer it. But if he does say yes, um, what laws are, are you technically breaking if there are any there? Um, because you know there there's a lot of unknowns there. He's given us some rules to play by, and right. you know, eighty five percent of it is true, and fifteen percent of it might not be true. So we don't really know all the rules and. I think we need to find, you know, that would be something interesting to find out if you do have to break a law or not. So I'm emailing Forrest right now. He doesn't have to answer, but I think it's such an easy question to answer. He might. I mean, Illinois Ghost just had a video where he answered Illinois Ghost's question about the backpack he used when he hid the gold. So the question, and I want to word it. I'm going to ask you two how I should word it. Does a searcher need to break any law to find your treasure chest? To retrieve it, your treasure chest. To I retrieve. would use the word retrieve. Okay. All right. That's why I'm asking. So, Forrest, I think it's something easy you could answer. Whatever your answer is, we'll put it in the vlog on Monday. 
Well, but, we don't care if you, it, but I don't want him to feel like he needs to respond to us. If you want to put it on Dale's. Well, or, no, that's, like, but he, yes, Forrest could put it anywhere out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think he may have even said it in a scrapbook, but somebody would have to no. quote me on that one. He's no. never said it, no, you don't need to break any laws. Find- for doing something like that, not technically arrested or something like that. Right, but, but that's breaking the law. So if you break yeah. the law, there's levels of breaking the law. Like a parking ticket is breaking the law all the way right. to murdering someone. Right, 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 right. It is, I think that covers the gamut of the whole thing. And technically, if you if you don't tell anybody and they don't know otherwise and you reach in there and no. it's under a rock. No. Yeah, that's well, okay. Nah. Let me ask you a question. S, Let me ask you a question. If I murder you and no one finds your body, did I commit murder? <laughs> Jeez. I would say yes. I don't know. You totally, I totally did. I, I, whether I go to jail or not, I totally did. Don't so admit you, it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all wrong. Don't tell Mike. Just don't tell ah. Mike. Uh, well, and somebody did say he's already answered that. He said there's no need to break yeah, anything. I think he I, has answered that, but I don't. I thought, think he said, I thought he said, he said no digging. No, he said you don't need park. to break anything. I think he meant you don't need to br- physically break stuff. Oh, like, like you break. You just uh, need to uh, sweep, uh, sweep a little dirt off in the southwest corner, and there's a little cover, and you remove the cover, and the treasure box is inside. Well, what about that? Are you I standing mean, there where a ranger's putting handcuffs on you or not? Well, they're, the walls are in the way. They wouldn't be able to yeah. see you, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, God. And then you have to run out, and then it's like well, Thelma and Louise. You're doing it at night the cl- with a flashlight. Oh, so I mean, Forrest and says he's a maverick and stuff, but I don't think that means break the law. Maverick, well, like rebel, like Simron James Dean, break the law uh, type stuff. I don't know if you noticed that in that definition when I brought up the Urban Dictionary definition of it. Right. Someone who's known as a maverick. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think Forrest is going okay. by the urban dictionary. I'm not talking about murdering the person and taking their treasure chest. You guys are going way too far. I was hypothetical. Maybe I should have said if you steal <laughs> the treasure chest. No, but here, here's a point. When you were showing, remember you showed the bro- the um, rocks that were kind of stacked up and you said yeah. underneath? That made me yeah. think of man-made structure. If I take rocks and I stack them up, is that a man-made structure? Nope. No me way. as a no man way. has uh, actually created that, no. that. Or does man-made structure mean plastic, mean... I mean, a log cabin is a man-made structure, right? Okay, Even though you're let's using go with trees. That logic. So does it have to be a natural tree? But if it's a tree planted by a human, then no. it's a man-made structure. And, well, that's um, actually, that's my point, though. If it's yeah. something found in nature, like, but but a, a, a person has manipulated it, is that a man-made structure? I, you know. I, don't, I don't think if you've moved rocks, <clears throat> that should be considered a man-made structure. Right, um, yeah. But a log yeah. cabin would be a man-made structure, right? Yeah, I definitely. built yeah, somebody. So we built just had Pilot cabin. come on as like, what, what, what are we talking about? Nah. <laughs> We're trying to understand, and we just emailed Forrest. Do you have to break a law? Because this, Phil has an entire solve, and it takes bending. you to a spot Violet, you can't get to. Violet called it bending the law, which is a technicality, but do you bend yeah. the law to find the treasure? Yeah. All right, Forrest, I'm waiting for you to email me back. That is my answer. Okay, so can you be kind of pregnant? You're either pregnant or you're not. That's, That's how I true. see it. Just like the he, law, you've either broken it or you haven't. He said it's going to take a little bit of a rebel to return. And if he answers back, yeah. if he doesn't answer, that's one thing. But if he answers back and says, yes, that would, he won't do that. But if he answers back and says, no, I think he's not going to answer in general. I think he's he's kind of gone quiet a little bit. Why do you need a flashlight, too? Why, do you, why can't you do it? For Why light, during the day? not see, for breaking the law. I don't think that but, means anything because he said take a sandwich too. I think that's just common well, sense. Like, you know, I don't think well, that's, that's I, not a clue to the location. Why have somebody in the car waiting with it running? Uh, because Terry mm-hmm. Scant with Marvel Gaze. Get out of there. Get the heck out of there. Because you don't want anybody to, you don't want any problems. Somebody sees you me get this thing. You don't want any rangers to catch you. Yeah, right. <laughs> but is it, yeah, I know what you're saying. I get it. So <laughs> Tony says cop daughter much. Yes, I'm a cop daughter. He's a cop, cop son. I can't much. believe that he's saying that. He's a cop son. I it's the same thing. Um oh god, I said pregnant. Now yeah, I know. Jimmy Fast that. jumped on that one. <laughs> no, not pregnant here. Um any lawyer watching. Twins. It was a Twins. joke. It was a joke. I don't want to go back. No, oh, but now Redneck Express says the treasure chest is not in the sun. So bring a flashlight. Forrest did say that, right? Yes, he yeah, did. That's and that's recent. So that's what we need to be factoring in on the poem, even though Randy's gonna be upset at us. Stop <laughs> looking at maps, look at the poem. That's now, what he tells us to part. do. 
Here's the hard part for me, Phil. I will say this, and this is actually why way back I reached out to Jason Dent more than anyone else because I was watching his videos on how do you even read a poem? I didn't know how, and this was like ABC one, two, three for him. And I'd watch one of his videos. I'd only like watched a couple of videos, maybe knew him a week or two before I went to Santa Fe and then invited him when Forrest said, can you bring someone with you to my house? Um, and so this is the hard part for me. I can't make sense of a, of a map. So I am still, and Google Earth, I'm getting used to. I still have to focus a lot of time on maps, even though I know what you're saying in concept. Get away from the map, start looking at, you know, the poem. But for someone like me that really has a hard time with maps, I, I still need to spend a lot of time there. But I like that idea because I take it as the poem should tell you what the warm waters are. And then once you figure out what they are from the poem, then you find out where it is on a map. But, but instead of trying to find out where it is on the map, you have to know what it is first in order to find out like where it halts on a map. Hopefully the poem, and that's what we're going to talk about next week, maybe that first stanza has got something going on, but the poem should tell us where, where, oh, where, where, see, what the warm waters are. Party pants. Structure, the arrangement of and relation between the parts of elements of something complex. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, he did say Google structure, so now that's subjective. What do you think that means? But to me, a log cabin a is a man-made right? structure. What's that? Well, well, that means that, yeah, if there's a group of rocks, as long as they are arranged in a relation of different parts of something complex, was that complex? Let's look up the word complex. <laughs> right. And down right, the right, rabbit right. hole we go. Well, you guys know the context of why he put out that statement. People were looking at outhouses. Because of Homer Brown, they went that way. They went down that rabbit hole. So he came out and said, don't look at outhouses. It's not in a structure. So that's why well, actually at that. the blaze too. I forgot to mention this, but uh, you know, when you walk, you can walk down all the way to where the cannon would usually be at the very tip of the point. Right. Um, when you look from there over to the point next to it, which is the southernmost point. Um, now this, this isn't, I mean, it's gra It's a ditch in the ground now. So technically it's not a man-made structure anymore. It's just a, a ditch. I don't know if you'd consider that a man-made structure, but at the other point, which is within 200 feet, there are the, you know, the squares I showed of the rocks uh, mm -hmm. stick, uh, stacked on top of yeah, each other. Yeah. Right along that point, there's about um, maybe three or four of them over there that have just rocks stacked up exactly mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. in a square. Um, so I don't, I never did go over there to look at them. I just took some pictures from afar. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that was kind of interesting too. Um, you know, okay, the whole. We're so over tonight. Yeah, we're at two hours. It's so easy to do two hours now. All right, everybody. Thank you, Phil. You were really a good sport. Yeah, so thanks for coming on. So many questions. You were awesome. I bet yeah, you'll get some emails. Back on, let me know. Well, I'll people just yeah. said they want the call, the phone lines to open. It's too no, late, no, no, guys. No. Yeah. No, no. It's <laughs> well, 11 o'clock. Marathon, right? marathon. You can call yeah, and leave exactly. a voice. Actually, I'll put the phone number out. It's just we're not going to take them live. You can call and leave a voicemail if you want to. So here, I'll put the number out for that, but. No so I hope phone everybody calls. liked it. I hope it was uh, it was logical. That's what I liked about compelling it. Compelling information. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Thank you. We'll be back Monday. We're going to talk about the poem ten years later. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching World Series of Fan in two weeks. Let us know if you're coming. See ya. Take care, everybody.